So how's everybody doing tonight? Today we're going to discuss preparing to buy your first home. If this is not your first home purchase, this will give you some information as to what's going on in the current market and some things that may have changed since you purchased your first home. So just want to introduce myself. My name is Reginald Perryman, and I've been a licensed realtor since 1992. And currently I'm working with Keller Williams Metro here in the Royal Oak area, but I service all three counties, Wayne, Oakland, and Macomb County. So let's talk about basically today's topics. So what we're gonna to cover today is the purchase process and overview, the different types of financing that a buyer will qualify for, and you'll see these terms when you're in the market for purchasing a home. And it's very important to know the type of financing that you qualify for, because there may be some restrictions as to which properties you can buy that are currently on the market. We will also cover appraisals and inspections, and we will give you a full understanding of what an appraisal is and how it benefits you, as well as a city inspection and private inspections as well. We'll also discuss negotiating price and terms. So this is basically negotiating your offer when you're interested in a property. We will briefly go over HUD homes and bank foreclosures. We will also discuss searching for homes. How do you find a property, uh, whether you're using a realtor or you're searching for a property yourself? And last but not least, we will discuss quick claim deeds versus warranty deeds. A lot of buyers have questions, or maybe you've seen a property that was listed for sale and they are only offering a quick claim deed to the property. So the first thing we want to cover is why are you buying a home? So this is a question you have to ask yourself. So maybe you're just tired of renting a property or maybe you have some, you know, you have a deadline and you just want to vacate the current property that you're in, or maybe you're selling a property. So there are different reasons why people decide to buy, but most important is that you have to understand that buying a home is a process not just the time it takes you to find a home but after you've selected a property and you negotiated an offer that's acceptable to both you and the seller the actually it's going to take roughly between 30 to 60 days to close if you're using financing so most conventional loans take approximately 30 days to 45 days most government-backed loans such as FHA and VA, or if you're using a combination of MISHTA, this can take anywhere from 45 to 60 days. So you have to give yourself a grace period. So let's say your lease is up in six months. Ideally, you wanna start looking for a home maybe two to three months prior to your lease being up, because this will allow you time to not only just find a property of your choice, but also allow time for the actual closing. So let's just briefly go over the home buying process. So step one is first you would select an agent, broker, or a realtor. So they're saying difference between a real estate agent or broker and a realtor. Realtor is basically someone that belongs to an organization and a realtor is a licensed agent or broker. It's just that they belong to an organization that follows a code of ethics. So you do have real estate agents and brokers that are not part of the realtor organization. So you can select either or, it's up to you. But just keep in mind, if someone is a member of the realtor organization, they follow a different code of ethics. Actually, they have a code of ethics. Um, both have to follow state guidelines and meet and comply with whatever the state laws are as far as real estate is concerned. The next thing you're going to do is obtain your financing. Now, some people will obtain financing first before meeting with the realtor, and that's perfectly fine. The reason you want to obtain financing first is because 
let's say you find a property and you submit an offer, most sellers are not going to take their home off the market if you can't show proof that you have financing. So in other words, what they're looking for is a pre-qualification or pre-approval letter from a lender stating that you can borrow or you are approved for a loan based on the amount you're offering as well as the type of financing. The only exception to this is if you're paying cash for a property. Once you obtain financing and you selected a realtor, you wanna sit down and analyze your needs. This is something that you would do with your agent of choice, and they're gonna go over everything that you're looking for and what it is that you need in the home. Once they analyze your needs, they're gonna actually help you select properties that are available on the market. And in some cases, you may have a realtor that's aggressive. Like what we do for our clients is, if there's nothing on the market, we actually cold call in neighborhoods and we do direct mailers to find you a home because keep in mind, most home sellers are considering selling their home and putting their home on the market, usually anywhere between six months to a year before they actually put it on the market. So let's say you're looking for a home and there's nothing on the market and you have maybe a three month timeline. If we send out a direct mail letter or we're cold calling in the area, there's usually a seller in the area that's considering putting their home on the market in the next couple of months. So, and that's another reason why you would hire an agent to work on your behalf, not someone is just gonna sit back and wait for homes to come on the market. Um, once you, the next step is to go through and select properties and actually go and view the properties because you wanna do a walkthrough of each property. After that, you'll write an offer. So basically that just means um, the home may be listed for 100000 you want to write an offer for 98000 and there's going to be terms and conditions, so that's where negotiate terms come into play. All right, and then the next step is, once your offer is accepted, you're going to have an inspection, which we'll discuss later. Some cities require an inspection as well. So whether you have a private inspection or not is simply up to you. Um, you're gonna have a title search conducted. So this is where um, your realtor or you can choose a title company to search the title on a property. If you're obtaining financing, this is mandatory, it's not an option. A lender will not loan you money on a property that, is, that does not have clear title. The next step is to obtain your final loan approval. So your final loan approval means that everything you submitted to your lender has been updated. Um, they do a final credit report and check. They're gonna, your whole file is gonna go through underwriting along with the appraisal. The lender is gonna order an appraisal on a property to ensure that it has the value. So for example, if you've offered 150,000, the appraiser is going out to determine if the property is worth 150,000. If not, you have to renegotiate that offer. And of course, you're gonna get an insurance check. So basically that's where the lender is um, going to go out. You're gonna get an insurance quote basically, all right? And then the next step is to obtain title insurance. So title insurance is basically um, the title company is going to issue you a policy of title insurance. And what this does, it guarantees title in case, let's say, for instance, you purchased a home in 2019, and in 2021, someone made a claim against the property, maybe a document wasn't recorded. Well, title insurance is going to cover the property in case there's any defects on title that was not found during the title search. And then you're going to obtain, obtain final funding to close. And that's basically where the lender has fact-checked everything, the appraisal is in, the title policy, and the title search is in, and you're ready to close. And from that point, you're going to schedule the closing. Okay, so let's talk about financing. So there are several types of financing options that you have as a buyer. The first one is FHA. 
FHA is basically Federal Housing Administration. So FHA only requires three and a half percent down. So if you're buying a $100,000 home, you only need $3,500 as a down payment. Now there are additional closing costs such as title company charges, tax prorations and things of that nature, but your minimum down payment is three and a half percent. You can negotiate for the seller to assist with closing costs. As we mentioned earlier, also there are down payment assistance programs as well as grant funds available to help with closing costs. The minimum credit score required for FHA is 580. Now typically you want to be somewhere above 600 or 620. Some lenders will not um, process an FHA loan with the 580 credit score unless there's um, it becomes a little bit more difficult at that at that credit score point. And then the next step is FHA 203K. So 203K allows you to borrow the money using one loan for both home improvement and a purchase. So let's say you find a home that is being sold as is. Let's say the property value of the home is 200,000, but you're able to purchase the home for say, you know, 150,000. So if the home needs repairs, say if it needs 30,000 in repairs, your mortgage would be 180,000. It will all be in one mortgage, so you're buying a home and making improvements all in one, but the home has to appraise for at least an amount that would cover both the purchase price and the repairs. A VA loan is just basically um, Veterans Affairs, basically it's a VA back loan program and it's good for a veteran you have to be a veteran you have to be an eligible veteran and there's a zero down payment requirement but there's still closing costs as well a conventional mortgage is just um, a mortgage that is not guaranteed or insured by any government agency so this is just your um, basic conventional financing loan where a lender has several programs but there's no government guidelines as far as the down payment. For example, a conventional loan can require 20% down or 10% down, depending on your credit and your financial status. Land contract is a form basically of seller financing. So it's similar to a mortgage, but instead of you borrowing money from a lender or a bank to buy the home, the buyer, you're just making payments to the actual homeowner until the property is paid off. So for example, if you're buying a home for 100,000 and you give the seller 10,000 down, you're just paying the $90,000 off in monthly payments. Versus if you were buying a home utilizing a mortgage, the seller will receive the, the entire 100,000 at closing and you're paying the lender back. So it's just a difference as to who you're paying. Keep in mind, we, we recommend that you record all land contracts with the county. This shows you as the owner of record when you purchase a home via land contract. Do not buy a land contract without recording that document. Typically, you would still close a land contract at a title company. And in most cases, the title company will require the seller to sign a deed the title company will hold that deed in escrow. So once the property is paid off, the title company will actually record the deed itself. So Mr. Financing is um, it's a state of Michigan program and it can be used with all loan types pretty much, conventional FHA and VA. So Mr. Financing um, only requires 1% down total. So $200,000 home, you only need $2,000 as your down payment. There's also a $7,500 assistance towards closing costs. Mr. also has a $15,000 program that's currently out as of today's date, February 2019. The $15,000 grant has limitations because it's based on zip code but it pretty much covers several counties in Michigan. 
and there's limited funds available. So if you're interested in that, just contact me after this and we'll go over that program as well. The Detroit Home Mortgage is a program that allows you to buy properties and renovate the property similar to like the FHA 203K program. Also, you can refinance your home and renovate your home as well. Detroit Home Mortgage is specific to just the Detroit market. So the home has to be located in Detroit, but it does allow for renovation of the property as well. So let's discuss appraisals and inspections. So the difference, basically an appraisal is done to determine the value of the property. And this is based on the home size, the market stats in the area, so what has sold in the area, and the overall condition of the property. The appraiser is basically gonna inspect the property to make sure it meets the lender requirements. So for example, an appraiser is going to come out and inspect the property, but their only concern is to make sure that the property meets minimum lender requirements. So for FHA, for example, they're gonna require that the roof has at least a three to five year life expectancy. Private inspections are done, but private inspections are a little bit more detailed. So for example, an appraiser will come out and inspect the property and tell you that the furnace is working, it appears to be in good condition. A private inspector is gonna inspect the furnace, they're gonna tell you the approximate age of the furnace and the life expectancy of that furnace. Most appraisers will not climb on a roof to, do, to inspect the roof. A private inspector will. So a private inspection is gonna be a little bit more detailed. City inspections are done just to make sure the home meets current city code requirements. Every city does not require a city inspection upon the sale of a property. So in this case, a city inspection will only be required if whatever city you're buying in requires a city inspection. A private inspection is an option you have as a buyer, but it's not mandatory, we, but we highly recommend you have a private inspection. And an appraisal is mandatory if you're obtaining financing. All right, so let's talk about negotiating your offer. And basically your offer negotiation is gonna include price and terms. And an offer will consist of three parts. One is being the price, and that's simply the amount that you're offering. So it's a $250,000 home, you offer 240. That's your price offer. Your terms will include the type of financing. Maybe the seller only wants to accept conventional financing because they don't want to meet FHA requirements. So you're negotiating based on financing type. Maybe you want to offer conventional, maybe you want to offer FHA or land contract even. Closing date, that's the date when you expect to close. So you're making an offer to the seller stating that you're willing to close in 30 days. Closing costs. Also, you're asking the seller to pay a portion of your closing costs. These are all considered terms. So you have your price terms and then your condition. So condition of the property, who's gonna be responsible for the repairs? So you've done your inspection, um, the appraisal is being completed and there's a list of repairs that have to be done. So either the seller's gonna do the repairs and complete everything or give you a repair credit or reduce the price. And that's gonna take you back to the negotiating table. But those are the three parts of your offer. So let's briefly go over um, HUD homes. So for example, let's discuss what a HUD home is. So a HUD home is basically a government insured loan that's been foreclosed. So it's an FHA loan someone borrowed money and they obtained the FHA financing, like we mentioned earlier, and that person defaulted on a loan, that property now becomes a HUD home, FHA, whichever lender has it, FHA is, is insuring that loan, the lender takes the home back, and then um, they basically give the property back to HUD, 
and FHA and HUD sells the property. The same with VA, it, the only difference is the home was VA insured. Bank foreclosures are typically homes that were under conventional financing in which the lender foreclosed on the property. Now HUD homes can be found basically, in, most of them are listed on HUDHomestore.com. HUD homes have a bidding process and typically owner occupants, meaning people that are gonna occupy the property, are given priority over investors. So when you look on her home store, if you're working with the realtor, they will explain to you exactly where each property is in the process. HUD has a window as to when owner occupant only can bid on the property. So that means during that time period, you will not be competing against investors. Once it opens up to investors, then all bidders can bid, meaning the buyers can, owner occupants, as well as investors can bid. If there's an identical offer between the owner occupant and investor, typically HUD will give uh, priority to the owner occupant. HUD homes are, some HUD homes can be financed through FHA or FHA 203K. Most HUD homes are listed by real estate brokers or agents, and you have to have a, real, a registered not just an agent, but a registered agent to submit HUD bids on a property. So you can go on the site and browse the properties online, but in order to gain access, you have to have a registered agent and the agent has to submit your bid. Bank foreclosures, most bank foreclosures are listed by real estate brokers, but bank foreclosures sometimes are listed on the actual bank's website or they may be on third party sites like auction.com and things of that nature. Now some banks will allow you to make a purchase or bid without a real estate agent. So it varies depending on the bank and depending on the property as well. There's several places you can search for homes. So of course you can get a real estate agent, you can work with the agent to um, give you a list of properties that they have listed with their sellers. Also, agents have access to the multi-listing system, which is the MLS. This is simply a database that all the realtors use. So if there's an agent from ABC Realty and then there's an agent from John Doe and Associates, they're all putting their listings in the same system and they show each other properties. That's part of being a realtor because they agree to co-op and work together to get property sold. There's also properties on Zillow, Trulia, Realtor.com. Those are basically third-party sites. They pull all of their information from the MLS and sometimes other sources. So sometimes Zillow will allow private owners to list their properties on the site as well. So let's say you're selling your home and you're not using an agent you put it up on a website like Zillow or Craigslist. Now, the issue with that is most owners don't understand anything about disclosures and the proper things, that the proper process of selling a home. So it becomes a little bit um, more of a risk to some buyers. So you have to know what you're doing. You can also hire a realtor to assist you with the purchase process on a private owned property. FISBOs, this is basically short for for sale by owner. These are just private sellers that are listing their home. You may see them offer their properties on Craigslist or you may just see a yard sign that says for sale by owner or something like that. So keep in mind what Zillow sometime and some of these third party sites, the information is not always accurate or up to date. So they're pulling information from our MLS some of these sites are also pulling pre-foreclosures, meaning that the bank recorded or they started the foreclosure process and Zillow, for example, will put it on as a pre-foreclosure. If you're looking at it and you don't understand how to um, read Zillow and search properties on Zillow, you will assume that the property is on the market only to find out it's just in pre-foreclosure it may be another year before that property even comes on the market. 
Now, you, you can go and talk to the owner and see if they're interested in selling the home, but the home hasn't went through the process yet of foreclosure. So the bank doesn't own it. It's still currently owned by the current owner. Um, just want to go over the types of deeds that are involved. So there are two types of deeds. You have a warranty deed, and that's basically a guarantee that you have clear title. That means, it typically means the property is closing, um, a title search was done, and there's no issues on title. And after closing, at closing, a warranty deed is prepared and signed by the owner, and you're receiving a copy of the deed. The original deed is being recorded with the county. The only way you can record a warranty deed is, is if there's no liens on the property. A quick claim deed is just basically a legal instrument that's just transferring interest. So let's say I own a property and I may have brought it or someone gave me the property, but I don't know what's on title. I can still quick claim that deed to you and you can record it, but it's no guarantee that there's any liens or defects. So if you're gonna buy a home via quick claim deed, at minimum, pay a title company to do a, a thorough title search. It may cost you two or $300, but at least you have a title search that was completed. Some people use quick claim deeds just to add on a family member, for example, or um, for example, you're buying a home, let's say you're buying a home for $40,000, right? And the back taxes are $6,000. You may decide that, hey, I can pay the taxes and payments and not pay it all up front. So how about I buy the property for $34,000 and I assume all the past due taxes. And so this way you're not paying the entire $40,000 up front. Well, in order to, you cannot record a warranty deed if the back taxes are due but you can record a quick claim deed. So that's another reason some people may decide to use a quick claim deed. And there are several other reasons as well, but keep in mind, if you're buying a home, you should want a warranty deed in most cases because that's guaranteeing clear title on a property. And if not, you will have title insurance to cover it. Most title companies will not give you a warranty or title insurance on a property if you're buying a home via quick claim deed. They may close the transaction because they're charging a closing fee, but they will not issue title insurance on a property um, if it's via, being sold via quick claim deed. Um, and for attending the webinar today, you will receive a free buyer consultation. If you're interested, you can email me or I'll send out an email with the calendar and you can just pick a day and time that you're available. And basically what we would do is go over the process, help you understand your credit and your financing to see which programs you would qualify for. Also, you will receive a list of properties based on what you're looking for, what areas and what price range. And again, I wanna thank everyone for attending this webinar. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me at 248. 291-8057. I can also be reached, or you can visit my website basically at reggieisrealestate.com.